This video is a follow-on to the previous video on Balin modeling. This is Larry Benko, call sign W0QE. And this video discusses the stresses on a Balin. A number of years ago, it became popular to put the Balin on the input side or the transmitter side of a tuner. Previous to that, a long time ago, uh, tuners all had link coupling if they were balanced output tuners. But over time, it became more convenient to use the, the high-pass T network and put a balance on the output side of the high-pass T network. Somewhere along the way, somebody got the idea that it was easier on the balance, easier voltage-wise on the balance to put it at the 50 ohm side, which is the transmitter side. And that philosophy was believed for a number of years and it's pretty well been debunked by now, but some people still believe it. But nevertheless, let's use SimSmith to see what really is going on here. It's kind of a very illustrative to actually be able to look at the data rather than read it in a magazine where somebody says it's true or false. And uh, that's been kind of the, the gist of all the videos I've done, uh, is that you're, anyone's plenty smart enough to make their own, draw their own conclusions, given that they have the ability to um, analyze a problem. It's when you're no longer able to analyze a problem and you trust someone, such as might be necessary for medical advice, that uh, you have to make sure you're very careful who you trust. So anyways, we're going to use the same balance we used in the previous video, which was the nine turns of RG316 on an FT114A-61 core, which is shown in the picture here. And we're going to look at it for about, a, I think, about a dozen different cases and look at the voltage with the, with the balance on both sides of a tuner. This circuit may look pretty complex, but let me go through it, and all the circuits that follow will be exactly the same. In this circuit, we have two independent circuits done. They're both faced with the same load impedance. They're both driven with the same generator. The generator is a 1500 watt, 50 ohm output generator. But in one case, the balance is on the antenna side, and one case is on the transmitter side. There's an L network involved in both of them, right here on this one and right here on this one. And they are tuned slightly differently. They need to be because in the case, well, let's look at the case where the, where the balance is on the antenna side. I ask for a, an antenna impedance of 20 plus J0. My 20 plus J0 is read by this control block and it is set, it sets the values in the U1 block and the U2 block to be half that. And the reason it's doing it is because we want this to be a balanced output. We want the same voltage here and here. We're assuming that the load is balanced for our analysis. So we put half the value here and half the value here of whatever we expected the total antenna impedance to be. So if it's 20 plus J0, this will write a 10 here and a zero there, a 10 here and a zero there in both cases. And if we look up above, we'll see here, 10 plus J, 10 plus J0, 10 plus J0, based on, based on this. The other thing we do is we change the impedance of the transmission line used in the ballon in some of the examples. And the third thing is I move the position of where the zero point is out here in a couple cases too. Just kind of some random cases to look at what voltages we see and in this case, it should be obvious that this balance has an effect on this impedance. So that this L network sees a different impedance than this L network sees. This L, ne this L network matches this impedance to 50 ohms, and if this is a 50 ohm balance, we're done. If this is a 150 ohm balance, a balance wound with 150 ohm transmission line, we'd match to some imp other impedance that this would transform back to 50. But nevertheless, they are slightly different networks. And the, the, the laborious part of this um, analysis was for me to go through and manually tune all of these, uh, which I did. And you can see that because there's 1,500 watts on, on the output of both of these. So if we look at the plots for just a moment here, they should look like the previous video. There's a huge amount of commonality between the previous video and this one. I'm just looking at a different aspect of the balance here in this video. We have the first two things we're going to look at here are going to be the voltage 
from W1 to W3, which is the voltage across this bell and on this side, and W2 to W4, the voltage across this side. So these two down here, tabs, represent the voltage across the bell and when the bell is on the antenna side. Then we see the power. The power is pretty simple. It's the power in R3 plus the power in R4, right here. And that shows that we've done a good match because we have 1500, right there, 1500 watts output. Lossless components in this case. And a similar thing for when the bell is on the transmitter side. So we want to compare these two plots against these two plots. And if we do that, what we'll see is the one with the highest voltage will be the one that's stressed the most. Again, for the same load impedance and the same transmitter power, etc., etc. So in this case, what we see is the blue and the pink represent the bell on the antenna side. So we see this number being 192 volts and 123. So we take 192 and that's the, that's the value we picked for the worst case in, on, the, on this configuration. This configuration, we're dealing with the orange and the pink. Well, the orange is less, less excuse me, orange and the light green. The orange is less than the light green. The light green is 120, 122, 123 volts. So we use 123 for that value. This case, the winner would be, in terms of stresses, the lower stress would be the case where the balance is on the transmitter side. And that's data point number one. I'll load another file in, and it'll be the, it'll be the same, and we'll, conti we'll continue on. And basically, when we're done, uh, there'll be a table I'll make. So I'll do the next couple uh, uh, slowly. So we'll, cl we'll take this file, we'll bring up another file here. Okay, this one is the same thing as before, except now we have 150 ohm ballon with the same 20 plus J0 load. And same circuit as before. Now we see a different voltage. Just because we picked a different ballon, uh, a different a transmission line impedance for our ballon, our stress has changed. Here we see a peak on the, for the antenna side ballon we see a peak of, uh, looks like 473 volts. And on the transmitter side, we see a peak, it looks like, of 168 volts. And again, the transmitter side wins. And we can continue on. So that's, that's two, two choices. Then I picked a reactive load, uh, 60 plus J200. Did the calculations again. Uh, again, with 150 ohm transmission line. The 150 ohm transmission line kind of represents two number 12 wires in a ballon. That would be wound with maybe a uh, sleeve of Teflon over the wires. The 50 ohm impedance in a ballon would definitely represent a piece of uh, 50 ohm uh, transmission line. And a ballon on the transmitter side will usually be wound with a 50, um, 50 ohm transmission line. And usually on the output side, people choose to not wind it with uh, transmission line, but wind it with uh, individual wires. But again, none of this really matters for the discussion. I'm just going through various examples with various impedance transmission line, lines. You could change these things, retune, the, retune these circuits, and uh, you'll come up with, if you do enough cases, you'll come up with pretty much the same answer. So this was case number two. Case number three looks just the same as case number two exactly, except instead of being 60 plus J200, it's 60 minus J200. Different voltages again, we see. And I'm going through this quickly because I th don't think anyone really wants to go through it real slowly. But you can look at all these voltages. And again, I'll do a, a table when we're done here. Let's close a few of these off here. If I do too many of these, I, I end up uh, sometimes running out of memory if there's too many things open at once. In this case, it's 100 plus, 100 plus J0. In this case, though, it's a little bit different circuit. We've taken the 100 plus J0 and grounded the bottom. This would be the case we'd be using the ballon for some reason, but you'd be driving an unbalanced antenna. And there's nothing to stop you from doing that. That's the stresses you get. And it's in, when, in this case, you see there's no voltage across this point and there's no voltage across this point because both, both of these points are connected to the same potential. All the stresses are across the, the one winding on the ballon. And the next case is the same case exactly except here. We've moved the tap point up to the center. 
change it, that changed the balance stresses quite a bit. Again, tuned to 1500 watts. One more case like that. This is a case that a lot of people use, and it really doesn't represent reality. It's kind of odd. Um, some people would think that by leaving a no connect on the output here, that this would be sent, the voltage here would be centered to ground relative to the voltage here. And that's not case. There's, that's not the case. There's no reference to ground here at all. So this case will be shown in the, in the final in the final table, but it really doesn't represent anything what you know, what, that represents reality. And we, we've seen in the previous video what the voltages are when you do this. They're not uh, symmetrical at all, about a zero point. If we wanted to drive a balanced antenna and the antenna was truly balanced, what we want is the equal voltage here and here. Now, the reason we do a balance uh, is so that in case the antenna is not exactly balanced, we still get the same currents going in, in the balance on either side, and in either side, which is what we want to have happen. Um, but for analyzing the balance, we assume that, they, the, that the load is balanced and we just keep on going. But anyways, this is the voltages we get if we do this case. And finally, this is with the load with the ground connected on the top side. This is a case where someone would probably misconnect the, the, the circuit. This puts the highest stresses on the ballon uh, to, to force it to completely have ground on this side and then ground on that side. That's the highest stresses. And we can see that the voltages are up in, this, up in the 500 and 550 volt region. And again, in this case, both, both circuits have just about the same, the same voltage across them. Now, so far we've seen voltages up in the f maybe up to 550 volts. Now let's look at higher impedances. Here's an impedance 1000 plus J0 with the center point grounded. And what we see is we see the stresses on the ballon 800 volts. In this case, the antenna side, blue and pink, sees a maximum of about 760 volts. The transmitter side actually sees 800 volts. So here it's a little bit more efficient, not more efficient, a little less stress on the ballon to put it on the antenna side than the transmitter side. Not a lot, but just a little bit. Here's another case, 3000 ohms. Voltages continued, voltage continues to rise again. In this case, the, the biggest stress, the, the green trace, is up in the 970 volt range, and it's, on, it's, with, it on, it's with the balance on the transmitter side. It's a little bit less stress, nine, 900 volts, if, it's on the antenna, if the balance on the antenna side. But that's not a huge difference. In the last case I've got here, it's kind of an odd case in that I put a capacitor in here. And that doesn't really, again, represent anything that's real, but I put it in there because I see it done sometimes in some modeling, and people assume that the capacitance of the antenna actually represents th this point, and I don't know if that's true or not, but the voltages didn't rise appreciably. They rose a little, let's see, this one rose from 970 volts to 1,061 volts. So they rose a little bit, but not a lot. So let's take all this data that we have right now that we may um, not really remember, and let's look at the voltages. So when we had a load of 100 plus J0, and we grounded the top, the center, and the bottom, we saw these voltages. So if we grounded the top, which is the case we say you shouldn't do, we can ignore that one for the moment. We had the same stress on the ballon when it was on the transmitter and the antenna side, and a little bit more stress when it was on the transmitter side if, it were, if the uh, connection to ground was on the bottom side of the, uh, of the ballon. When we moved up to a reactive load, 20 plus J0, with a 50 ohm transmission line or 150 ohm transmission line, the 150 ohm transmission line showed a lot higher stresses on the antenna side then the transmitter side, and you know that's the way it is. We moved up to 60 plus 200, 60 minus J200. We saw different voltages. Again, the transmitter side was a little lower voltage 
then the antenna side for the placement of the ballon. Up here, when we get to the higher impedances, they're almost identical. You'd have, to, you'd have to draw the conclusion from this that the sizing of the ballon really makes no difference where you're going to put it. There are individual cases where one is much better than the other one, and if you knew what you were designing ahead of time and you knew what impedance range you were going to match, you might be able to make use of that. So from this, I would draw the conclusion that the people who have done a mathematical analysis and said there was no difference between the two really weren't telling you the whole story. But in general, they gave the right answer. And that's kind of maybe a wishy-washy way of, um, of uh, saying what I believe here. But um, the, uh, the data shows what it is. You can run any kind of data you want to run, any kind of values you want to put through here, and see what you get. But a couple things are important. As we increase the transmitter power, the balance stresses will go up. That should be obvious to everybody. And as we increase the impedance we match to, the balance stresses go up. And it's interesting that as we get the balance stresses up pretty high, it really doesn't matter which side the, the balance is on. So a 3000 plus J0 is a pretty high impedance. You might have an antenna with just the right length of feed line to get that kind of an impedance, and you need 1000 volts. Now 1000 volts on a core like I had used for the, um, for the file here, the file was the file through all these for all these um, all these cases was the file I had used in the previous video, which was the nine turns. Now that nine turn file can only take less than 100 volts across it, so we'd need to increase the core size a lot, which would increase the, the length of the wire somewhat. All these cases were done with a four foot piece of transmission line with a velocity factor of one. Get rid of this thing here. Right here, length of transmission line, impedance, velocity factor of one, and no loss. You could change that if you wish. So hopefully, uh, download the files. They're all, they'll, be, they'll be available. Uh, look down below the video, and you can see a link to where to go get the files. Download the files. Play with them. If you want to do further analysis, any comments or questions, let me know. But uh, the bottom line, in my opinion, is it really makes no difference where you put the two balance. With that being the case, uh, if you put the ballon on the transmitter side, you end up with a tuner. You know how it works. If you put the ballon on the antenna side, the, the, the tuner has to match a different set of impedances. It may make the tuner work better for you. It may make it work worse for you, but it will match a different set of impedances because there will be a transformation from the antenna impedance to the beginning of the matching network due to the ballon. Having said that, uh, putting the matching network on the antenna side, excuse me, putting the ballon on the antenna side means you don't have to isolate all the components in the tuner. So it seems to me that putting it on the antenna side is probably an easier thing to do in the long term. But of course, your, your, design, your, your design goals may be different than mine. And certainly in a low power environment, uh, insulating those components really represents not much of an issue at all. Hope you've enjoyed this. And if any, you have any comments, Please let me know.